So this is what we've done today. Uh, along these seams, you can see where it's shiny here and not shiny. I prepped all of this about five inches out uh, with 80 grit on my random orbital. And then I mixed up some micro balloons and I spread it out on each side. Fairing compound, same with this seam here. Hopefully you can see. Spread out pretty good on each seam. And believe it or not, right up in here, where there's nothing in between, it was actually like really flat across there. I tried and tried and tried to get it to to fill that blank spot there, but every time I'd go and squeegee it off tight, it, it would disappear, meaning that's really close to perfect right there. So, a couple of little spots here where there were tiny little pinholes. And then the back 42 inches of the boat, I skinned with that stuff. Because in a planing hull, like the zip is, they say the last quarter or third of the boat, quarter to a third, needs to be perfectly flat on each side here. It's got to be perfectly flat. So I built up a little bit of this fairing compound on, on specific low spots. All right, so... This was the part that I, I had been worried about for a while, how I was going to get this right. And what you're looking at now is a laser that I borrowed uh, from a millwright at work. And I'm using this laser to basically project my water line on the boat, where my paint's going to be. This is how I'll mask off the boat. So you can see it starts at about three inches down at the back of the transom and runs across and it crosses right under let's see if I can get here close crosses right under our uh, joint so our joint will be hidden well there I'm blocking the laser line anyhow so it follows around you can see right here oh here I am blocking the laser again so you can see our chine line this is what will be visible and our paint line will be the laser line right up here and it ends right here at the tip of the stem and according to the Glenelg plans the, the low water line should end 12 inches ahead of frame five and a half and I made a tiny little sharpie mark here so we're at about 12 and three quarters inches on our uh, projected water line which is fantastic I mean that's I couldn't ask for any better you can see right now the hull is covered in dust uh, that's all my fairing compound that I put on the other day. It's all sanded back. and So, I'm getting ready to build the skeg and get that put on. And uh, while I'm in the process, I'm going to get my water line taped out so that I can sand all of that bottom down to the water line and prep for my bottom paint. So, this is a Craftsman laser track. And it is such a cool tool. It has a vertical and horizontal leveling bubble and this little base with screws so I set this up on a five gallon bucket with uh, some cribbing underneath it and started leveling it to where it was perfectly horizontal and roughly at the height where I wanted to cross with my water line below this joint um, so then I just leveled everything up and by sheer accident I ended up right where I wanted to, according to the Glenelg plans, right where I should, on the tip of the bow. And I ended up in a, a great spot. Oh, here I am blocking it again. Back here at the transom, because I didn't want to have a huge amount of my transom covered in paint. You know, I wanted as little as, little as possible. So this is roughly the line. It's going to turn out great. And the neat thing about this is, because it's a laser line, what it's doing is it's projecting a perfectly straight line. However, if we come up to the top and look at it, see what the line does right there? The laser goes like this and then it makes a kind of a, an abrupt turn. Um, that's exactly what my paint will do. It'll follow this abrupt turn also. However, when it's viewed in the water from the side, it's a perfectly straight line. Isn't that weird? So, neat, neat little tool. Uh, it takes all of the guesswork out of this water line. All right, so we're working on the center skeg today. As you can see, I've just got it sitting on the, the boat down the center line right now. 
but uh, it's not attached and this isn't of course its final shape I wouldn't just screw a big old block to the bottom of my boat uh, basically on the leading edge it'll be an inch tall on the trailing edge it'll be two inches tall so it'll be a gradual taper and then I'll probably round the nose over and back here on the back I'll round the back over uh, just so there's no you know real hard square edges or anything then I will counter counter bore this down uh, I want to say I got about nine screws I'll put in this throughout the length it is 48 inches long and uh, this is African mahogany just like all the frames just like everything else but this is a center member that's going to help the boat track and steer and not want to skid out in the middle of corners I plan on towing my kids around on tubes so you know I, I don't want it to skid in corners I want it to grip the water pretty good you know anyhow working on that um, I took my bevel square and of course you know each side of this boat it's not a flat bottom it's a V it's very gradual back here and that V gets steeper as we go forward um, obviously unless you wanted to spend a mountain of time hand fitting that um, what I did was I took my bevel square and I just measured this angle up here this angle from this ply to this ply and it turned out to be 10 degrees um, at the 48 inch mark so you want to set this skeg 24 inches from the back of your transom so that you don't introduce cavitation around your prop so you want to keep it two feet forward of the back of your boat according to the Glendale plans they said to run this thing seven feet long the skeg which would that would add three feet of where it is right now you know clear up into here somewhere and there's just no way <laughs> there's no way I'm gonna do that that's just in my opinion ridiculously unnecessary I don't want to make the boat hard to steer I just want to you know make sure that it tracks straight and, and gets a little grip so I, I shortened the Glen L plan skeg from seven feet to four feet I think that's going to be more than adequate um, again you know this skeg is an optional thing in the Glen L plans they give you about three sentences basically describing you know where to mount how to fasten and general dimensions of it but because it's not part of the actual Glen L plans it's like an added extra um, there's no real there's no pattern there's no defining um, you know this is how you're supposed to do it exactly to the T they just kind of give you some rough dimensions for it so I wanted to have this option on there the skeg you know anything that's gonna make the boat perform a little bit better I think is worth doing so what I did was I got this again African mahogany 13 16 says so the same stuff that all of my frames are made out of and I ran it to work and remember I took that bevel square and I measured that angle up there where it was the steepest because it would be incredibly difficult to change the angle of the bevel on your way down so what I did was I took the steepest measurement which would be up at the front the steepest bevel or angle which turned out to be 10 degrees cut it in half which would be obviously five degrees I set up a table saw and here you can see you can see that uh, that five degree bevel and I cut five degrees basically to the halfway point the midpoint and I beveled those all the way down each side at five degrees so this is a 10 degree angle although it's very very slight basically I wanted it to fit very tight to the hull up at the front where there's the highest risk of impact of something whacking it you know um, down at the back it's probably closer to like a five or six degree but it actually fits really really well even though the angle is slightly off of course this will be bedded in thickened epoxy I think I'm gonna use my Glen L epoxy grip for this because it's very thick so I'm going to slather the center line of the boat, slather the bottom of that uh, skeg. I'll have all my holes pre-drilled drilled, and then I'll start screwing it down. Um, and that's going to squeeze out all over the place. There'll be a large amount of epoxy that'll squeeze out. So then I'll take my little epoxy applicator and it's basically just a, a half round. 
and I'll run it down the seam so that'll make an epoxy fillet on each side of that and I'll do it to the end and down here at the front. So it'll be attached with nine inch and a half silicon bronze screws. It will be bedded in epoxy with large fillets down each side and front and back. Uh, so it'll, it'll be forever. The screws really, the epoxy will be way stronger than the screws holding it. Basically the point of the screws is just to provide a mechanical fastening to it while the epoxy sets up. The epoxy will be where all of the strength is on this skeg anyhow. All right, well, here we are a couple hours later. I've got the center skeg on. You can see it's two inches at the tail. One inch tapering to the front. I smoothed them off, rounded them over, countersunk all of my holes. There are nine holes in all with inch and a half silicon bronze screws. And then I came over with, uh, with the same epoxy I used to glue it down, only I mixed in some uh, micro balloons as fairing compound to kind of get it to thicken up a little bit and stay in that groove. But there it is. Our skeg is on. All right, well, this is where we are now. You can see it's, uh, we got some shinies on it. It's coated in its first epoxy encapsulation. Uh, I now have mahogany plugs in all of the holes. And just as a little added security, I, uh, before I put these mahogany plugs in the holes, I mixed up the same epoxy that I'm using for the encapsulation and I poured some down each one of those holes so it covered the head of the screw uh, about an eighth inch or so. Covered the head of that screw with epoxy to help seal it in the event any water were to get inside that hole, which I highly, highly doubt. Um, it couldn't bypass that epoxy and leak around the screw. So anyhow, um, put a little bit of epoxy in each hole. Uh, then I epoxied all of the plugs and shoved them in. Then today I, I came back and I cut them all off, sanded them down, sanded all of this down to get that fairly smooth. And then we put on a coat of epoxy. I'll let this cure for seven, eight hours. I'll put on another coat of epoxy and then hit her with a little light sandpaper and we'll be ready to start doing bottom paint. Making good progress. All right, well, as you can see now, we've got the water line taped off. I used the laser to get it taped off. And just like in the previous little section of this video, you can see that abrupt turn right here with the tape. But when it's viewed from the side, let me see if I can get far enough back. Viewed from the side at water level, it's a perfectly straight line. So that's all taped off. I have sanded everything from the water line up, which is actually down. With uh, 80 grit, that's what's recommended. Uh, here's a look at it from the front. So that's our that's our paint line. Everything uh, like from this line up is going to be bottom paint. I'm getting ready to apply the primer, a couple coats of primer. Um, here's our joint transition. So it'll be buried under paint. This is our joint transition here. So this will be buried under paint, all of this. So it should look really clean when it's done. The skeg got two coats of epoxy, uh, epoxy filleted, and uh, that's all sanded down as well. So here's a look at the transom. Now this is four inches from this corner to this line. Four inches on the money. And then it's pretty much a laser straight line from there to my joint. It's uh, 13 sixteenths of an inch down. And then we cross on the bottom. And the Glenelg plan state that we should end right in here somewhere. It's actually about two inches past that now. But I'm going to paint my boot stripe. So the actual blue of the boat if I did this right, hopefully. The blue of the boat, the bottom, should be slightly below the water with the water line running kind of through the middle of my boot stripe, is what I'm hoping. Uh, we'll see how close it turns out. But it's all taped. We're getting ready to do some paint. So, making good progress.